Okay, it's that time of year again. Um, I actually just got back from the gym because today was pouring raining out this morning. So um, I actually joined a gym again. Haven't been in a few years because of the COVID restrictions and all that crap. Um, but I was starting to feel like junk over the winter. So uh, yeah. So what I'm working on here is I got the it rained out like you wouldn't believe last night. Um, it actually poured out. But I'm working on the dump body alarm because I have to get an inspection sticker and they want a dump body alarm on the truck. It never had one on it before because it just didn't have one on it before. I'm not gonna try to figure out why. I just know it didn't have one before. Originally, this truck came from California. I'm trying to think of what to do next. Um, I can't mount this switch on here because then you can't screw the thing in. So I think what we have to do is we have to actually wire it and then mount it after it's wired. And the way that it works is it has these, it has two screws like this and it just goes through the switch. And then this one here, you can slide the switch in any direction you want. But I think when I tested it, it's all the way up for us. All right, let me get a little more set up because I don't have a shop. This is kind of like what I work out of for now. But this is why my wife and I um, she's my business partner and we decided that we need a shop, uh, badly, but uh, I went to, uh, Harbor Freight. Now I got supplies, you know, I got all of the, uh, butt connectors or whatever you want to call them. I got zip ties in case we need to zip tie the wire uh, and the loom to anything. Um, I bought these for stripping because I was sick of the other ones. And these work really good. My dad used to have a set I used to use all the time and I liked them. What else did I get? Oh, I got the important stuff. Electrical tape. Now, I also got more heat shrink to heat shrink tube goes over the wire. I got 10 feet of 3 8 uh, wire loom. They call it protective wire wrap. I call it, you know, plastic loom. So I might be wrong, but whatever. That's all you really need to do this project. Let me, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a wire, like make up like a little harness, and then I'll turn the camera back on and show you what I got going on. Okay, so I had to stop what I was doing because it rained again. Um, uh, I don't know how well that comes up on camera. I can barely see it, but it rained out again. All right, so this is what I made. I put a red wire in there and a black wire in there and I taped them together in, and then I put them inside here my son and I fished them through and then every so many like a foot or so I just taped the loom shut so and it's about 10 feet and then I left it long on this end because I figured that end could go in the dashboard. Um, now, how I came up with 10 feet, um, that's all that came in the package. So I figured if I have to trim it or cut it, it'd be easy to do it. But this is a problem too. The other problem is, is my camera died. But this is the switch. So I don't know how this is going to work. 
Um, I'm thinking I'm going to run to the common. And I, and I, may, I'm, I may be doing this wrong. But I'm going to put juice in here. And I am think the normally open is going to be here. And when that little toggle switch goes like that and it hits this button and closes the uh closes the switch it'll complete the circuit and it should turn the buzzer and the light on in the cab now if i'm wrong which there's a possibility that this works opposite of what i'm thinking and I can just take it off of the normally open and put it on the normally closed, which means when it comes down, it hits, you know, the thing and pushes this in. It actually, like, try to look at it like this inside here. So this would be normally closed, and then that would be you know, normally open. I just don't know if this thing is, you know, how it's built inside. Because you can hear it clicking. But that don't mean nothing to me. I tried to find some diagram online about it, and I couldn't find it. So, if it doesn't work this way, what we'll do is um, take it off of here, and then just put it on the normally closed, if it doesn't work with the normally open. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm, uh, I've got candy in my mouth. It's probably just not good to have candy in my mouth when you're describing something, but. And then this goes through here. Like I said, I, uh, I got candy in my mouth. Cause, uh, I don't know, this is just how I am. I'm not, not really going for the professional YouTube channel here, okay, guys? I just want to keep it like an average Joe doing stuff. So, if we put that like that, then I went down to Florida and uh, got hooked on Werther's Originals. Now I can't stop eating them. That fit through there. No, it might have to go a little bit bigger. All right. I don't know if you can see that. That's just a little too big. All right. That's perfect. The middle one. Okay. So... Put that on there, blue. All right, now I don't have any formal um, mechanical education. Like I didn't go to any kind of school for mechanics or anything or automotive stuff so if you're not comfortable with doing stuff like this you might want to you might want to check in with like a I don't know professional shop or something okay now you can see why I wanted to have it wired up before I put it on because how you can't get into this box, you know what I mean? So. Uh. 
Uh, there we go. All right. So it just has these two little nuts on the other side. It's always good to have two nuts. See, and you, you can adjust this if you wanted to. So like, so it could do that, but I think ours is gonna stay all the way up. Now we can, we can run this wire down and along the frame, inside the frame rail. I'll run it inside the frame rail. I have to lay on the ground. Uh, the plywood's wet, but what I'll do is, I know you can see, right down through there, I'll come up here with the rest, and then I'm gonna go up and go through that hole and um, with the wire loom. And then what I'll do is I'll get more of this pipe dope, like I, uh, not pipe dope, but firewall dope, like I did for the, um, this is the electric tarp uh, controls. So we'll do that. And then if we wanted to, we could get power off of this, this solenoid, but I think I'm gonna get power off the ignition switch inside there. So when you turn the key off and on, or when you turn the key off, it'll shut off the, um, the buzzing noise so let's say you're doing hot mix and you have the dump body up in the air like we got now and you were working out of the back chutes with the wheelbarrow if you had it hooked up to non-stop power all the time like say you hooked it directly to the battery the buzzer would be going off in the cab the whole time you're sitting on the side of wherever working out of the asphalt chutes with the body up or just like we are now, let's say you're washing the truck, the back of the cab, okay? The same thing, the buzzer would be going off. So you have to hook the buzzer up to the ignition switch. So when the key's off, the buzzer's off. So this is all of our wires that need to go into the dashboard. Unfortunately, I got a little bit of grease on them, but that's okay, they're gonna get real dirty. And then I, I'm just gonna wipe them off with a rag when we get to the cab part. Cause the frame is all dirty, you know what I mean? Underneath the truck, you got like grease and oil slinging everywhere when you're driving. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this where it needs to be and I'm gonna tighten it up because when I tested it, I think this is where it needs to be. So it's just a eight millimeter socket. There was a wire that ran through here before that went to a divider valve. And what I did was, is I cut all the, um, these were all tight together like so. And I was cutting a lot of the excess um, zip ties and everything because um, when I gave it a haircut, I took out a lot of crap that was unnecessary. So before redoing the zip ties, I figured it would be best to just run this new stuff and then uh, just do one larger zip tie around the whole bunch like that you know kind of like make a new wiring harness and not zip tie something to a zip tie to a zip tie because i've done that before and it just number one it looks like crap number two it really makes it difficult the next time you have to work on something so yeah. I'm probably gonna cut these zip ties too, cause I don't know what they go to. But uh, I just gotta be careful here because I um, just greased the drive shaft recently, and um, there's grease everywhere. And I just gotta be careful not to get a face full of it again. All right, change of plan. I pulled this all out. I think going down and around and all of that was unnecessary. I think what I might do is I might just come along here like so 
I have a thing I can put here and then it, I can screw it to here. I'm okay with screwing through here um, like a clamp. But I, it was just too busy down there. I have to go down under there and zip tie up all the stuff that I cut. But I'm thinking I'll just go right under the cab. Uh, and I'll follow the uh, tarp, um, the electric tarp cable, and that'll give me something to zip tie to because that's pretty sturdy stuff. The reason why I want to go this way is because underneath here, you can see that's a factory, there's a factory hole. Um, not a hole, it's a, it's a bracket with a, um, a big loop for um, holding wiring harness. So, I'll just go right through it, like so. Rings the phone and... So, we'll just go through a factory loop. All right, now that's a lot better. Back there, I can just zip tie it. All right, let me get the phone. See, I wanna go on this side of the steering column. All right, now what I'm gonna do is, this loose zip tie here. This loose zip tie here, you can see I got a clear path right through there. It's nice and free moving, so it's not pulling on anything but I'm gonna cut this zip tie because we don't need it I'm probably gonna move it up integrate this zip tie with this factory tie down holder over here somehow and then put this in with it and follow this all the way up because this is nice and stiff so this stuff flops around so we could keep it tight to there like so then that'll uh, eliminate any of the chafing Little self etching primer. Nice. Tighten that up. Hit it with some paint. There we go. All right, here's the tricky part. I don't want to scratch the steering wheel. So I put some rags over it. There's where we got to go. Right there. We got to get on that little switch right there. Okay, so this is what I got going on here. This is the switch. We got to come through. We got to come through the buzzer and switch back over to the ignition to get juice. And then the ground, I'm thinking the ground's going to go somewhere just to get grounded. However, what I was saying before about, um, the ignition you want to run through the ignition so right down here you can see that is full-time power that is the supply to the ignition all right now you see this one here that I'm touching nothing happens now watch this all right now I'm gonna turn the ignition on So that's where I want to put my connection. Last time I did anything in this cab, I took the steering wheel right off and pulled this all the way down. And I should have did that this time, but I'm going to sneak through here. 
I gotta find a wrench that fits. And I gotta take that eyelet off. I'm gonna put an eyelet on here, but before I put the eyelet on here, I wanted to make sure what size it is because these are very, very small. So I'm gonna go the next size up so I can match onto the ignition. So I'll go in my goodies here. I am planning on putting new seats in this truck and everything. Um, until the day they tell me I can't drive it no more in my state and then I'm going to retire. Alright. I like to twist these on and then make sure that the wire comes out a little bit onto there. And then give her a good crimp down. All right, give a little tug test. All right. All right. Now, if I did this correctly, um, you'll get this. Well, I touch this ground. But I didn't do it correctly because he's out there holding his finger over the switch. So that's that's backwards. I kind of had a feeling, but let's just for shits and giggles. That's with the ignition off now. Bryson, Yo. you try what? Hold on. When it goes back on, you hear the buzzer. Yeah. You let go of the switch. Are you doing it? Yeah, I let go. Alright, do it. Put it back on. Look out. Alright. Okay. So, that is done correctly, but not correctly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's backwards. <laughs> it's supposed to buzz when it's up, right? Yeah, but that's an easy fix because we take the switch apart and instead of doing... See, I was confused in the beginning because when the switch said that it was um, um, normally on and normally off, yeah, they don't tell you what position the inside tabs of the switch are in. Right. Okay, yeah. That's annoying. Yeah, because now I don't... I didn't know whether to hook it to normally on or normally off. So now I know that I hooked it to normally uh, open, 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 normally open. And then when we hit it, it closed it. So we need it to be normally closed. When you hit it, it breaks the connection or when the switch goes up it, or vice versa. I have no clue, dude. You <laughs> lost me. <laughs> I know, I know in my head what it is. You but know what it is, but I... I don't know how to my problem most of the time is I don't know how to explain myself. You're I just not. know It's backwards. It's backwards. We just gotta just... take the wa take the wire off the middle one Nope, and just move it to normally closed. I have it on normally open All right Get one of these big guys here. Now, this is a lot bigger, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give her one fold because in order in order to use this screw, I have to use this eyelet. So, let's give it a fold, stuff it over. It's pretty snug, but once we crimp it down here, it should be even more snug. Uh, yeah. Give 
with the old tug test, we're good. Now, put that in there. All right, if I did that correctly, that light should come on when I turn the key. God, that's annoying. Let's see if this works. I got a new horn coming too for the horn button. Let's fire up the truck. Throw on the PTO. Go up with the body. That's my video on the, the dump body alarm. Um, it's not really a how-to. Um, I don't do how-tos. I just do entertainment stuff. And most of the time I make these videos just to entertain myself. And you guys get to come along and watch me. Uh, I don't know. Watch me make them, I guess. All right. Catch you on the next one.